this department, this is where the application of the paste filler is used to fill the pores of the open grain hardwoods that we use, mahogany, walnut, uh, koa wood, rosewood. Each of these gets the paste rubbed in with the grain and carted off in the opposite grain direction, buffed to a low sheen and allowed to cure and dry. From here it goes in, it's further prepped and at that point the color is applied if necessary to that model. Here we are in the paint booth. This guitar is a dove, cherry back and sides. Application of color in this case is carried on with a pigment suspended in nitrocellulose lacquer. There are no colors being used anywhere that are any more vivid or traditional than those which are used by Gibson. Historic favorites such as the dove and the hummingbird and vintage sunburst have been our sig signature for over 100 years. Once the application of paint is applied, this guitar will go into the scraping department where by hand, painstakingly, the paint will be removed from all the plastic edging. It's a slow process, and the use of microscope slides aid in the identification of where the plastic begins and the wood ends. That way they can get a very accurate scrape job. We don't attempt to put all the color on in one operation, but we build it up in layers. There's no intent to saturate the wood. We're just trying to lay a light color of pigment over the top of the wood itself. We're in the color department here, and uh, we're watching Van Felder put a, a perfect sunburst on a Gibson guitar. If the tone of a Gibson is the heart and soul of what we do, this is certainly the fingerprint. Every Gibson guitar has a history of character, and much of that is the color and presence of the guitar. It's not something that comes easy. Van's been with uh, our division and worked with me from the very, very beginning. I don't believe there's anyone in the industry, whether in Nashville or any other manufacturer, that has done as many or replicated as much in the way of a historic precedent as Van does. First, the top receives a coat of sealer and then it gets layer upon layer of toner, which is allowed to dry between coats. Excess and overspray is brushed off in between each process. The appropriate shade, shape of the sunburst, as well as the shade, is done per model. Perimeter shading is done with tobacco brown and then the golden of the, the center is put in and once this has a chance to flash off and dry then the outside will be reworked 
until the final sunburst is achieved. These shading lacquers are basically transparent and carry a pigment that allows us to apply it on top of the wood rather than soaking into the wood. And our goal is to achieve the correct shading with still having a translucent or transparent color that the grain of the wood is evident through. Now our sunburst yellow is again added. There's a greater amount of clear in this so we're able to actually see through the opaque brown that was put on and dried really quickly so we have a sense of how much additional color to lay on in each stage. The sunburst yellow is kind of like opening the window and being able to see just a little bit clearer while you're adding the, the toner in. Now the entire instrument is giving a, a fog coat, a bond coat sealer, aid in the adhesion of the lacquer throughout the balance of the finishing process. These are the steps to make a 1936-37 advanced jumbo absolutely right. This is the scraping department. This is where the excess material is removed from the plastic edge binding. Again, paper thin, less than paper, one, two thousandths, three thousandths thick at the most. This is probably the toughest job we have because any slip at this point means that we have to refinish the guitar. So the hands that do this job not only have they the burden of doing it right, but it's tedious and they work all day at it. It also means that they do perfect work. Here we see the use of the microscope slide, which allows us to see through the glass into the plastic that we're scraping. This is maybe 2,000 thick, maybe one. Basically all we're doing both sides still appear red. We're only removing the paint. We're not creating a trench or a lip. 